have those long nights lying awake in bed wishing you could just fall asleep. On today's edition of Wellness Wednesday, we're learning about the importance of sleep and what to do if you're not getting any or enough. <laughs> Joining us right now is President just is, Dr. Dave. Just Dr. Dave. We'll just go with Dr. Yeah. Dave from Healthcare Solutions and a lecturer at the Department of Family and Community Medicine. Listen, it's a yeah. listen, it's a well, proper title. We're gonna list the whole no, thing. No, 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 Dr. No, no. Dave Greenberg <laughs> joins us now. Dr. Dave, I we were talking about this in the commercial break and Sleep is something that is challenging when you work on a morning show and just in general it feels like right now, but what is persistent sleeplessness? And the, and this is the same as insomnia because I have people in my family that kind of suffer from insomnia or live right. with insomnia, I should say, but are they the same? Are they different? It's a little like worrying about whether you got run over by a truck or a bus. Fair. It doesn't really matter. The <laughs> fact is if you're not sleeping and feeling refreshed when you wake up in the morning, yeah. you're not getting enough sleep. And the fact is, is that you know, for example, you have issues with sleep because you've got a schedule, right? Right. I, most doctors, I can't relate to everything my patients have gone through. Like I've never had a baby, for example, right. but I know what it's like to not sleep because mm -hmm. that's how I trained. And there were years when I just couldn't sleep more just because the I didn't have the opportunity, your, yeah. exactly. Yeah. And I, but the problem, but the, on the other side, I went about probably 30 plus years thinking that six hours was a good night's sleep. And my doc, <laughs> I'm like, oh, that, that's sounds, me on a, on a regular basis. Exactly. Yeah. And my doctor <laughs> said to me, you know, David, if you don't start getting some sleep, this isn't going to end well. Right. So that was it. That was brought it home for me. And I feel like it's one of those things where it really does depend on your schedule. What are some of the major health implications of, you know, persistent sleeplessness? Because obviously they are very uh, intrinsically linked. Well, for sure. So, I mean, there's the physical stuff, right, which is things like trouble losing weight, which leads to high blood pressure, diabetes, those kinds of things. But there's all the psycho-emotional stuff, right? So there's mental health issues. Do you want to live with somebody who isn't sleeping? Like these, you know, it tends to make you cranky and it tends to make you have difficulty concentrating. Like there's a lot of things that go with it. It's incredibly important. There's a reason why we sleep, evolutionary reasons, survival reasons, so it's really important. And I know there are some other common misconceptions or myths around sleeplessness because you hear it all the time, you see a lot of it on, on social media when it comes to sleeplessness and insomnia. Can you talk about some of those? I can't talk about the myths on the internet yes. because I really, cause they're just way too much we'll be, to talk about. We'll be about. here for days, But guys. for example, the idea that sleep is natural. Yeah. It is natural, but that doesn't mean it's supposed, that doesn't mean it's easy. Fair. And we live in a world now where there's no night and day anymore. People have phones, like the sleep hygiene It's a 24 thing, hour kind of life. Correct. And sleep hygiene is a massive factor that people don't give enough consideration to. So I got people who go to sleep, especially even kids, like high school kids, mm -hmm. right? Get into bed, phones right next to them, right? They, and no, and these are and these are real challenges. You get up in the middle of the night, you go to your phone. Nothing good's going to come of that. <laughs> Facts. And we were talking about this uh, off camera because I have a, a bedtime routine when I do this shift. Because otherwise, I find if I'm on my phone, I will just continue. Your bedtime routine, based on what we talked about, and, <laughs> no, is is great, except yeah. for the part where you just got a limited number of hours to sleep. Fair. But if everybody would learn how to shut down a little bit, yes. right, and make sure that your room is quiet and it's dark and there's preferably no electronics and so on. Then, um, then the world would be a better place. It is. Uh, it's. It's taken a lot of time to to get there. Thank you, Dr. Dave, for all the information. We appreciate you coming and sharing the knowledge, and uh, resources, and even discussion guide on how to bring up sleeplessness to your doctor. You can visit helptosleep.ca. The number two. The number two. Help. Help to. Number two sleep. .ca. .ca. And for more information and tips from Dr. Dave, you can watch Things to Know this Saturday at 6.30 a.m. on CP24. And to break down my schedule, I have I read my book, put my phone on Do Not Disturb, and I don't check it until the morning. And don't set your alarm to get up at 6.30 to watch me, okay? Or you'll just tape it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Dr. Dave, thank you so much. I appreciate pleasure. you. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank, thank you. you. Oh, my gosh. I... <laughs>